This is our new air fryer, the Ninja AF160. This is the Max XL model, and it's really, you can see, quite a large uh, kitchen appliance. We got this today from Maxine Hashmal, one of the main kitchen stores in Israel. Hannah is here dicing up some chicken, just in time for Hanukkah, kind of a Hanukkah air fry miracle of sorts. We're big into ethnic food. This is some uh, Burmese curry cooking here. We've also got some beans. Hannah here is using a uh, gastronome pan. I've introduced these to the channel before. I've talked about how absolutely amazing they are. But she's doing some batter. We're going to be eating some uh, Korean fried chicken. So we're going to be battering up these, putting them some gochugang. Okay, our first batch is almost ready to go into the air fryer here. It's been sitting in, we're just immersing it in uh, batter and putting it from here into powder. So Korean fried chicken is one of our all-time favorite eats. I think I did a video about this before, in fact. That was in the pre-low-fat days, so it's going to be interesting to see whether how this fares in the air fryer. Um, we bought chicken breasts, so the lowest fat chicken we thought we could find in the supermarket. This is what we used. It's actually just labeled here, as you can see, as a tempura powder, but it's specifically powder for uh, Korean fried chicken. It's got some other ingredients in it as well. We bought this here in one of the Asian foods. There's actually a few Asian food stores in Jerusalem. And the difference, of course, here is that they uh, generally have kosher certification as well. The first batch is hopefully going to be successful. We're going to go on ahead and put this into the air fryer. Do not crowd the chicken tenders. This we hear from other uh, people on YouTube is the number one rule of successfully frying chicken in an air fryer. So I actually bought the uh, air fryer today very specifically because on Sunday the Jewish festival of Hanukkah is starting here in Israel and throughout the Jewish world and Hanukkah is associated with eating lots and lots of fatty food including famously latkes but also other food. I was feeling pretty bummed out about uh, the low fat diet, how that was going to work with Hanukkah. So I thought that the, buying the air fryer now because it's a happy celebratory time of year in which giving gifts, gifts is traditional as well. So I thought that uh, we'd buy this and I can try oil free uh, latkes on Sunday just in time for the start of the festival. Two other kitchen appliances I'm kind of almost evangelical about. One of those is the Instant Pot, they're absolutely brilliant. We've had one since we got married two years ago. And the second thing is the rice cooker. Rice cookers are uh, much underappreciated devices. We have our rice here that's gonna go along with our chicken. Three minutes after the cooking time, we've just uh, given it a second inspection. It's starting to get nice and brown, starting to smell really good as well. And we're gonna just begin the uh, sauce aspect of this now. Stage two of the Korean fried chicken is preparing the oils. We're getting the ingredients assembled here. And uh, we're putting this into our lovely copper pots that we got after our wedding. And what Hannah has said is that the kosher gochu, gochu jang is a relatively recent innovation. It's only been here for a few months. And of course, anybody who's into Korean food and especially Korean fried chicken knows that gochu, gochu jang is the magic sauce that makes it all work. Uh, other things we have here is our uh, ginger garlic paste from Shufersa, which is like the main grocery store here. We have soy sauce and we have uh, ketchup and we have some light corn syrup. So this is all going to go into this uh, lovely pan and uh, we have the fried chicken uh, continuing its quest towards zero here in the air fryer. You're about to watch in uh, real time as the big moment unfolds for the first time ever. I think it needs a few more minutes, but it's, it's crisping up. Yep. It's quite crisp. Maybe three minutes. As to why we're cooking Korean fried chicken in our apartment here in Jerusalem, besides Korean fried chicken being incredible. So in Jerusalem, there is not a huge amount of what I would call ethnic food. Now people will always uh, give out to me saying, well, you know, Jewish food is ethnic food as well. But there, for some reason, there's not a lot of like Chinese food here, Korean food. There was a Korean place, I'm not sure if it's still open, uh, in the old city, it's closed. That was, veg that was vegan or vegetarian. So they clearly weren't doing uh, Korean fried chicken. There is a couple of uh, Chinese-like places and Pan-Asian places, but there really isn't for a capital city of one million people as much ethnic food as you might expect. So uh, we've taken matters into our own, our own hands and uh, cooked our favorite Korean food here in our kitchen at home. The magic sauce that makes Korean fried chicken, Korean fried chicken is starting to take on its uh, absolutely incredible smell and unmistakable color here in our kitchen.
The chicken's had its extra four minutes and it smells really, really good and it's starting to look nice and crispy now. So this is our uh, first batch of Korean fried chicken. We just didn't use any oil whatsoever in the air fryer. And uh, Hannah's just put this into a colander and it's like draining off any almost non-existent fat. For the second one, we're gonna use a small bit of spray oil. So there's gonna be a difference in terms of the uh, fat-free levels of both of our two batches. I've just had my first taste of food cooked in an air fryer. We just uh, sampled some of the fried chicken. I must say I'm absolutely blown away by this. I went into this purchase completely blind, as we mentioned, I thought for a low fat diet, this would be a no brainer to have. I've never had food cooked in an air fryer before. I don't know anybody that owns an air fryer. Uh, I have seen people on Facebook groups saying that they really, really love theirs. So this was a complete guesstimate that it would be a good thing. And uh, I just tried the, tried the first piece of chicken that came out of this and I'm absolutely astounded by how good it is. It tastes like deep fried chicken, except it doesn't have that kind of gross, really oily taste in your mouth that comes when you put chicken in a boiling vat of oil. So uh, I'm really, really impressed by that and I can't wait to see how this turns out with the Go to Jang sauce on top of it. So this uh, Korean fried chicken sauce was apparently courtesy of Aaron and Claire's YouTube channel. So thank you very much, Aaron and Claire. We have our uh, Korean fried paste. We have our ketchup, soy sauce, chili pepper flakes, sugar, minced garlic, and uh, starch corn syrup. Okay, the moment the, the moment of truth. First batch of uh, first piece of chicken going in to the sauce here. Okay, it's time to have my first ever piece of uh, Korean fried chicken cooked in the air fryer. It looks to me pretty much the same thing as regular Korean fried chicken. You can see that nice gochujang sauce there uh, just dripping off. And I'm going to have a bite now, see how, tell you guys how it is. 5 out of 5, seriously good. Air fryer, Korean fried chicken, almost fat free. So you can see it says here, ninja.israel, so I guess we have an Instagram channel or whatever. Um, I wouldn't say these are necessarily popular here, but I would say that they are becoming more popular. I'm seeing people talking about these things in Facebook groups more and more. And uh, judging by my first piece of, of Korean fried chicken, I think that they this is gonna be a pretty good collaboration between me and my new uh, air fryer.